In this video, we are going to apply concepts of interaction between matter and law of conservation of energy to explain the movement of ball bearings in the presence of a magnet. Before we begin, do you remember these concepts? With these concepts, let's move on to the experiments. I will release one ball bearing along the track towards the remaining five ball bearings in contact with each other. I will release the ball from the height of 5.0 cm. With this height, the ball bearing will have a potential energy PE. Predict what will happen to the five ball bearings upon collision. Let's see if you are right. Let's watch what happened in slow motion. As the ball bearing reaches the horizontal section of the track, it reaches a velocity V and comes to a stop upon collision with the five ball bearings. The last ball bearing then leaves the group at velocity V, same velocity as the first rolling ball bearing when you reach the horizontal section of the track. Can you use these concepts to explain what just happened? Now, let me explain. As the ball bearing reaches the horizontal section of the track, all the potential energy of the rolling ball bearing is converted to kinetic energy, Ke, taking the potential energy at horizontal level to be zero. Since we know the formula of kinetic energy, we assume it has velocity V at this point of time. Energy is transferred from the rolling ball bearing through the five ball bearings. The last ball bearing then receives all the energy. Since no energy is lost or added, and all ball bearings are identical, it has the same amount of kinetic energy, Ke, and hence, leaves the group with the velocity V. This velocity is the same as the velocity when the rolling ball bearing reached the horizontal section of the track. So the ball bearings roll at the same velocity before and after the collision. This transfer of energy demonstrates these concepts. Here's a challenge for you. Try using the law of conservation of momentum to explain the interaction. Now, think about this. What happens when we introduce a magnetic field into the setup? Let's find out. In this second demonstration, I will be introducing a magnetic force into the first setup. This is a neodymium magnet. It is a very strong magnet. As you can see, it attracts all five ball bearings together. I will now release one ball bearing along the track towards the remaining five ball bearings in contact with each other with the magnet on the nearest end. I will release a ball bearing from the same height as the previous experiment. From the potential energy equation, we know that when the height of the ball bearing does not change, its potential energy also does not change. So before it starts rolling, it will have the same potential energy as the previous experiment. Now, predict what will happen to the ball bearings this time when the rolling ball bearing collides with the magnet. Let's see what happens. Do you see that? Now, let's replay what happened in slow motion. As the ball bearing reaches the horizontal section of the track, the velocity V is the same as the velocity in the first experiment. This is because the height of release is the same. However, once it is under the influence of the magnetic field, it accelerates. Upon collision with the magnet, the last ball bearing leaves the group at a much higher velocity, V1. The ball bearings behave differently this time. Can you use these concepts to explain? Now, let me explain. As the ball bearing reaches the horizontal section of the track, all the potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy, Ke. This amount of kinetic energy is the same as the first experiment 
since the height of release is the same. As the rolling ball bearing approaches the magnetic field of the magnet, it experiences the magnetic force of attraction, F. Let's assume that this force is constant. In real life, this force gets stronger as we get nearer to the magnet. Just before collision, the magnetic force of attraction has moved the rolling ball bearing over a distance d, and hence, work is done on it. This work can be calculated as shown. The work done on the rolling ball bearing and the kinetic energy, Ke, it processes add up to Ke1 just before it collides with the magnet. Using the kinetic energy equation again, we now know the rolling ball bearing has a different velocity, V1. As it has a larger amount of kinetic energy at this point of time, energy is transferred from the rolling ball bearing through the five ball bearings. The last ball bearing then receives all the energy. Assuming no energy is lost or added, it carries the same amount of kinetic energy, Ke1, and therefore, same velocity, V1. The kinetic energy of the last ball in the second experiment, Ke1, is larger than the kinetic energy of the last ball in the first experiment, Ke. Therefore, the velocity of the last ball in the second experiment, V1, is also higher than the velocity of the last ball in the first experiment, V. Applying the law of conservation of energy, concept of potential energy, kinetic energy, and work done, we can explain the interaction between matter and energy. Next time you see moving objects around you, you can explain the movement by applying the same concepts too.